So we want to add signed numbers. And by the way, these are integers. And I've been using that word, but I'm not sure you know what an integer is. Josh, do you know what an integer is? So you might want to have your iPad open and write this down. It's just a little note, and you can date it. What's today? The October 5th? Yes, October 5th. And I will have also, I just didn't get to that far. Uh, I will also have a, you know, I have a calendar up here for Quadratic. This is what we've been doing, and I've got that scheduled to MEA. And I'll have that also. There's a schedule on their Schoology site, so it's there. Okay, so um, I will get a calendar like that because I'm a visual learner. I can't. I can look at Schoology all day long. It doesn't matter. You want to take some notes, so Josh, you have to open up your iPad. Or you can just take your pencil. Right. Your Either way. Pencil, you your pencil. Yep. So that's up to you. I have paper in here someplace. Well, they should have paper. They should have paper. Okay, integers. Now, I use that word, and when I use a word and you don't know what it means, you need to say, hey, wait, I don't know what you're talking about. That would be like going to si uh, Spanish class and not knowing the vocabulary. How can you talk in Spanish if you don't know what the words mean? Okay? No, nope, I can't. So integers are positive, and they're negatives, and guess what? There's no fractions, there's no decimals. So these are called whole numbers. And whole numbers are exactly what you think they are. There's no fractions. And if I end up having to add positive and negative fractions or decimals, I will use my calculator. Because that's a, it's a good tool. Now, if I've got integers or whole numbers, then it's not so bad. Um, I can do those in my head, and many of you can too. So try, when you're doing these worksheets, I want you to practice without the use of a calculator so that you can know, so that when you get to the algebra piece, you're not going to be pulling out a calculator when you don't need to. So that's the big thing there. They're positive and negative whole numbers. So they look like this. Now these little set theory, these go forever. So it's negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's what I'm talking about. We're not going to do fractions. If we do fractions, we will do it on our calculator. So we have some things where we have to add and subtract fractions. And I don't have too many problems when they're both the same sign. So let's just take 3 plus 5, for instance. We know that's 8. That was pretty easy. Right? Now, if I have a negative 3 plus a negative 5, anybody know what that one is? And if I need to slow down, you're going to tell me. Because if you're writing on your iPad, it's probably slower. Anybody know what a negative 3 and a negative 5 is without a calculator? Elias, are you going to remember what an integer is? No. What does it mean? If we use a number line, I'm going to start at 0. I'm going to go 3 to the left. Then I'm going to go 5 more to the left. So what is that? Negative 8. Hi, did you get switched? Uh, you're not finishing my class. You probably still have to go back to your first hour. Yes. I don't think so. I don't. Think, I sent him six hours. So you probably haven't been switched yet. Okay. Now, did you notice anything? There's something similar to these two problems. What did I do to get the 8? What did I do with the 3 and the 5? Did I subtract them? Multiply them? Add them? Divide them? What did I do? You add it. And notice when I get the negative 8, I still add it. So if this sign joining, I mean, sorry, if these signs with the numbers are the same, these are both positive, these are both negative. So if you have the same sign 
then you find the sum. And there's another word you may not know. Sum means to add, and that's how I remember it. Sum has three letters, add has three letters. But I'm using what they call mnemonics. Same sign sum. So if you're adding two negatives, you will add the numbers without the signs and then make sure you put a negative in there. Okay? There, there is no easier way to do this, to tell you the truth. Multiply and dividing are much easier. So now, if I have a, uh, let's see, a 3 plus a negative 5, or a negative 3 plus a positive 5, I'll put the signs in. Okay, what's that going to give me? I'll draw my little number line. Okay, let's do the first one. You start at zero and you're going to count three to the right. Right? And we're going to go back five. Where am I going to be? Will I be on the positive side of zero or the negative? You're going to go back five. You're going to be on the negative. Well, how many are there? Husband, you know? Pardon? What's three plus a negative five? What kind of two? It's a negative two. What about this one? I use the same number line, just use a different color. What if I start at zero and I go three left, but then I go five to the right? Am I going to be positive or negative? Whoops. I'm going to be positive. But it's positive what? Positive two. This is the tricky one. If they're both the same sign, I just add them because they're both going the same direction. But if these signs are different, how can I get a 2 with the 5 and 3? Forget the signs right now. How do I get 2 with using 5 and 3? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. What are you doing? I'm not adding. 5 plus 3 is 8. I'm subtracting. So if these are the same signs, uh, I'm sorry, different signs here, and you can use a number line, but I'm just giving you just my little trick that I've used for 30-some years. If I have different signs, we find the difference. And that's a long word, and subtract is a long word. So difference means find the, di find the uh, subtract the numbers. That doesn't mean I have the right sign. I have to be careful with that then. And by the way, difference, you'll, you'll use that word a lot. What's the difference in the price if I do this or if I do that? So they talk about price differences all the time. So you need to realize when they talk about a price difference, we're subtracting. So how do I get the signs? I'm going to look at back at my problem, and I have more negative signs than I do positive, because I have five negatives and three positives. So you could do it this way, plus, plus, plus. This is just another way of looking at it, and I have five negatives. And they kind of, whoops, they kind of cross each other off. I'm left with two negatives. That's another way to do it without a number line. So you're going to take the number that has a higher value, so five is bigger than three, and this is a positive, so that's positive. That's the one that's kind of tricky. So if they have the same signs, I sum them. If they have different signs, I subtract them. Different signs find the difference. So I'm using this little play on words here to help you remember it. And that, otherwise, I just think about what's happening. You could think about the temperatures in Minnesota. Do you know they got 14 inches of snow up north? It's still snowing. This is October 5th. Wow. So you can talk about temperatures. What's the temperature difference? It means I subtract my temperatures. And you can think of money because we all understand money because that's important to understand. So adding subtraction can be difficult. I still, now that well, those are only adding problems actually. And when I get a subtraction problem, like a negative 3 minus a negative 5, now things are getting complicated. Now, on that one worksheet, they had parentheses around them. 
I don't know if that makes it worse or better. It's minus 3 minus a negative 5. It's just to show off those negatives. Well, this is a subtraction sign. But subtracting is the same as adding the opposite. We don't change the first number. We want to subtract a negative 5. So we want to add the opposite. Add opposite. I change those. Some of you uh, have done very well without changing. Even I change them, and I've been doing this for a long time. Why, well, really long time. Like at least 50 years, probably. And I still change them because I want to get the right answer. It's so important to get the right answer with the right process. Okay, you've had a couple days on that. I think adding and subtracting is much harder than multiplying and dividing. So I'm going to change pages here, and we'll multiply and divide. Oh, by the way, what would this answer be? A negative 3 now plus a positive 5. These are different signs, so I take the difference and subtract them. I get 2, and I have more positives than I do negatives, so it's positive 2. Okay. Now multiplying and dividing is so much easier. What if I have 2 times 3? What's that answer? 6. So if they're both positive signs, I get a positive. That's pretty easy. What happens if I have a negative 2 times a negative 3? You guys know what that one is? It's positive 6. If I have a negative 2 times a positive 3, what's that one? Negative 6. I'm going to basically multiply 2 times 3 and then find the opposite. And there's 2 times negative 3. And what's that going to give me? Well, I'm going to take 2 times 3, which is 6, and find the opposite. Still negative 6. So these are easier. So if I have two positive signs, I'm going to get a positive. That we already knew. If I have two negative signs, and I like to use this little analogy, at least my mother always used to say, two wrongs don't make a right. Have you heard that one? Yeah. My mother would be in her 90s today, so it's pretty old. But in this case, in math, two negatives do make it right. It may make a positive. This is finding the opposite of the opposite. They're just undoing each other. And here, if I have a negative times a positive, I will get a negative. If I have a positive times a negative, I will still get a negative. And it doesn't matter if it's multiplying or dividing. It's the same rules. So what I do to do the problem is I actually do the arithmetic first and then decide on the signs. So if I have a negative 5 times a negative 7, first I'll do 5 times 7. What's 5 times 7? Do you guys know? 35, and then I look at the negatives. I have two negatives, so it's going to make it positive. So if you have an even, you know what even numbers are? Well, negatives, it's going to be positive. Even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, you know even numbers, right? What if you have an odd number of negatives? What if I have... A negative 2 times 3 times a negative 4. Okay, first thing I do is I multiply the numbers. I do 2 times 3 times 4. Now, I don't care what order you do it, but you always have to do two numbers at a time. You can't do three. So we could do these two first, which is what? 6 times 4, which is? 6 times 4 is? You guys don't know that one? Well, there's two ways to do it. I can add 6 up 4 times because that's what multiplication is. Somebody got really lazy and said, I don't want to write the 6 4 times. So they made up a symbol, and that's what multiplication is. So this is 12, and that's 12. How much is this? 12 and 12 is 24. Good. So first I do the numbers, and then I look at the signs. And I could count them up. That's an odd number of signs, so it's going to be negative. You can look at it this way, if you have a hard time. These two negatives, they undo each other. That makes a positive. And a positive times a negative is a negative. 
And that's all there is. I mean, dividing, you just divide the numbers. It's, uh, there's nothing different about that. Subtracting sucks. Now, I have I used to do this. Let's see if I can remember it. We have the bad teams and we have the good teams. Okay? And the good team is a plus. That's Tonka. Who's the bad team? The one we don't like. Hopkins, is that the worst one? Oridina? Poisetta? Poisetta, okay. <laughs> so now, the good team is the plus, the bad team is the negative. So if Minnetonka wins, that's good. So I have my team here, and you have win, lose. Now, the bad team, there's Poisetta. If Poisetta loses, which is negative, that's what for us? That's good. Or you can talk about the Vikings. <laughs> you know, the Vikings win, that's good. But you know what? If they lose, if the Vikings lose, whoops, the Vikings are positive. If they lose, that's bad. Or if Tonka, Tonka's a good guy. If they lose, that's bad. If the bad guy, Wyzetta, or I don't even know who the Vikings are playing on Sunday, whoever their opponent is, wins, then that's also bad. So that's just a way to remember it. It's just another trick. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get you your assignments uh, printout. And don't freak out if you have something missing, because I'm not sure I have everything in, because you've turned in. So I have to get, um, I have to print out my grade book from Schoology. Oh, and then, oh, now I really messed you up, probably doing multiplication. I have a little Schoology quiz on there for you. I've enabled you to take it three times. It's like five questions. So go ahead, I want you to take that. You remember where those are? Can I get you this one? I'll show you where they are. So it's Schoology. So you got to make sure you're logged into Schoology. I'm logged in. I almost forgot about that. Whoopsie, that's not what I want. Okay. And so we're going to go to Algebra of Lines. I should fix the eye in there. It doesn't work because my eye doesn't work on my Mac. <laughs> I have ways around it, but I didn't obviously fix it there. And if we go down under online quizzes and tests right here, everybody there, you know where that is? Just a quick little quiz. And see, there's all the stuff. And it was also over here in your calendar. And you just click on that. And there's your scores, but I'm not going to do that. There's a bonus question in there. So if I go to questions, okay, there's your questions, but you can do it right there on yours. Okay? So I'll let you take that, and then I'm going to give you a worksheet, and that's what, all we're doing today. So I'd like everybody to take it, because you're all registered. Even if you're new, it still gives me feedback. That's what I want, is I want information about what you're understanding, what you're not understanding. Monday.